Hello and welcome back to the Dominion Menagerie previews. This is day five of the previews. Once again, if you're not sure what all this is about, uh, there should be some explanatory stuff in the video description. So uh, before I get started, I wanted to mention I was expecting this to be the last day of the previews, but uh, Donald X. Vaccarino, the creator of Dominion, who has been releasing the previews, said that he plans to continue releasing more previews between now and when the set releases. So right now you can play on the Dominion client with um, the, the, the cards that have been previewed up to and including these uh, new cards for today. Um, the cards that he previews going forward will not be playable until the set releases, but they'll be available to, you know, to look at and to discuss, which is, I don't know, is exciting enough for, for me. And there'll only be one per day, so I'm going to continue to to uh, record my thoughts on those, but hopefully the videos will be shorter because there'll only be one per day rather than, you know, three to six things to talk about. Um, but still, that's pretty exciting, and uh, I definitely appreciate uh, him doing that. So, shout outs to Donald X. Um, as if, you know, that isn't sort of an, a thing that should always be happening when we're playing and discussing Dominion since he created the whole game. Anyway, um, so let's get on to today's previews, starting with Mastermind, which is a five cost action duration. At the start of your next turn, you may play an action card from your hand three times. So the obvious comparison here is to King's Court, uh, because like King's Court, it allows you to play an action card three times. And as we know, King's Court is a super, super, super powerful card. Um, the there's There's very little that I can think of in the game of Dominion that is more powerful than the King's Court effect, maybe nothing. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean King's Court is the best card, but part of the reason for that is just because it's expensive and so it's like harder to acquire. Um, and its power level is somewhat contingent on what else is going on in the kingdom, but in almost every kingdom it appears in, King's Court is amazing um, because, you know, whether you're using it on deck control or on payload or on attacks, you know, or on, or on all of these things in some combination, like it's always doing a lot of work. Um, so Mastermind uh, has some of that potential for sure um, because it can it can do some of the same things King's Court can. But I think it's very important to, to take note of the ways in which it can't. So the maybe uh, most obvious example of this, which I think Donald X actually mentioned in his uh, preview text, is that you cannot really like master chain masterminds the way that you can chain king's courts because if you if you mastermind a mastermind right that means that okay you play a mastermind one turn and the next turn you when you you and you activate the mastermind you play another mastermind that means the turn after that you're going to get to play three actions three times at the start of your turn but that doesn't allow for the same kind of action chaining that King's Court enables, where you can, you know, if you play King's Court, if you King's Court a King's Court, you know, and then you can King's Court another King's Court off of that King's Court, and you can sort of just generate uh, terminal space without even needing villages. Um, you can't really do that with Mastermind. Like, certainly Mastermind allows you increased terminal space if only because, for instance, let's say that you have two terminals in your deck you can't you don't have any villages you don't have any source of plus actions but you can play a mastermind you know and then the then the next turn you can play one of the terminals off the mastermind and then the other terminal um later because the first terminal won't have taken up uh, an action a space for an action um but the fact that you can't really like chain them together um in the same way that you can king's court means it's not going to be nearly as good at dealing with that kind of situation. Um, you really, I mean, I, the example, even in the example I gave, like you really have three terminals in your deck. Mastermind is one of those terminals. And so like the turn that you play the Mastermind, you can't play one of those terminals, right? And that that problem never really goes away. Um, now, if you, have, if you have plus action cards, you know, you can get, even if it's just plus one action, you can get into a situation where, okay, you play Mastermind and then the next turn you play you mastermind one of the plus action cards. Now you've effectively you've essentially got a village effect. 
So certainly Mastermind can allow you to go from, you know, plus one action to basically having a village effect, but it can't get you from no plus actions to a village effect in the same way that King's Court can. Like, yes, it can increase your terminal space, but but it can't do so like, you know, in a way that compounds. Um, so that's like a huge limitation uh, to the card. Um, and just in general, like the fact that you have to have the card in your hand at the start of your turn um, is another big limitation. It, it's going to make it much harder to line it up with what you really want to be able to play three times. And in a lot of cases, what you're going to need to do is mastermind your deck control cards, your draw cards, because um, if you don't, then you're not going to draw into your payload, all of your payload cards. But but like one of the things that makes King's Court so good is the ability to uh, triple your payload cards and make you know your payload much more efficient within your deck and you're like i mean certainly you're gonna have the option to just say well i'm just gonna you know mastermind the payload card if you have it in your hand um but you're not gonna be able to do that in like the consistent way that you can with king's court in general i mean sometimes you will right sometimes there will be other ways that you can be consistent or you know you'll just happen to have it in hand or whatever like but in in the general case um this is not going to be nearly as good at like hitting just the right thing um and even sometimes that can be an issue with king's court like lining up the right things at the right times can be a challenge but it'll be it's going to be much more of a challenge with mastermind um all of which is not to say that the card won't be good i mean i definitely think it has like it still has so much potential to kick off your turn you know if you have um you know, if you have like a decent number of, you know, like lab variants or something in your deck and you, you know, you play a mastermind at the end of your turn and then the, you know, beginning of your next turn, you just play one of those lab variants, like that's still really good. You know, you just drawn, you know, like six cards and gotten plus three actions, like, uh, at, you know, or increase your, let's say increase your hand size by five and, you know, and, and gotten plus three actions, uh, on top of the one action that you haven't even used yet so you're at you know plus five cards plus four actions like that's 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 fantastic um so i mean i definitely don't think the card is bad by any means i just i guess my like i, I i'm i'm focusing so much on the comparison to king's court because i think you know king's court is such a powerful and centralizing card and i think like that it's it's like very understandable to look at this and be like oh wow this is like king's court and it's like well it kind of is but it kind of isn't um it's like it it's uh like the 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 like an instance of mastermind is you know similar very similar to an instance of king's court but they just don't like stack together anywhere near as well as king's court um I don't know how often you would ever even want to mastermind a mastermind. I mean, I guess depending on how many of them you have in your deck, like that could be a good way to like if if you can mastermind a mastermind and then the next turn you mastermind a mastermind and then two other things and you just keep doing that, then like you get three mastermind plays every turn, like maybe that works out if you have enough stuff that like you're going to be able to reliably do that. Um, but like it's that seems like really hard to set up um, on a consistent basis in a way that is just like King's Court. It's much more doable. So anyway, um, I mean, the effect is still so powerful, like that. I, I think it will be a good card. Um, but how good of a card? I'm not I'm not really sure. Um, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's going to just depend. Like, obviously, the more the more that you can, like, you know, thin your deck and, and have, you know, like, an action-heavy deck, obviously, the better it's going to be because that way you don't, like, end up in a situation where you have um, no actions in hand. You know, if you have duration draw, certainly that's going to work very nicely with this because you're going to be more likely to see the thing that you want to play. Or if you have things like save or haven or whatever else that's going to you know gear that's going to give you something that you can interact with it with um yeah it's um this is definitely one of the cards that i really want to be able to play with before i i try to make a judgment on like how good it is relative to other um throne variants um 
Like I'm not, I guess maybe that it, maybe a good comparison is to a card like Royal Carriage in terms of like, is it more powerful than Royal Carriage? I tend to think not. I tend to think Royal Carriage is going to be better. Um, is it more powerful than just like regular old throne room or, or crown? Like, mm, I still tend to think not, uh, to be honest, but, but I could, I could see myself being very wrong about that. Um, but I, I think, I think that the reliability is going to be a big issue here, but, um, but maybe I'm under estimating how often you have at least like one good action in your starting hand right and it is important to note that for example if you have if you have a hand that's just like a smithy and some treasures and you're like oh man i don't have any of my villages if you have a mastermind in play you play that smithy you didn't use up your action you draw nine cards and you could probably find a village at that point so i mean yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe I am. Maybe it will be stronger than some of those other throne variants. I'm really, it's really hard to say. Okay, but I've definitely talked enough about that card. Um, it's a pretty interesting design, though. I like it. Anyway, so the next card is Black Cat. It's a two cost action attack reaction plus two cards. If it isn't your turn, each other player gains a curse. And then below the line, when other player gains a victory card, you may play this from your hand. So this is. This is similar to Coven insofar as it is another cursing attack where the curses generally are going to uh, arrive late in the game rather than early in the game. Um, the The issue that I see with this is like when exactly are you gaining it? Um, so you this is going to be a weak card early like almost certainly like in the vast majority of cases like most of the time people aren't gaining victory cards early in the game sometimes they are sometimes there's a card like mill or nobles you know that that people might want to gain um like as as part of building their deck as opposed to just like a, aggressive greening or maybe you know if somebody's going for something like rebuild or like a ironworks gardens you know rush or whatever kind of that that sort of thing maybe you know in that case you 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 grab some of these but like in the general case where like people aren't you know putting green cards into their deck until much later in the game um you're not really gonna want this early on most of the time because plus two cards just is not a very strong effect i mean on some boards that is how you have to draw if that's what's available to you but most of the time you're gonna have a better option for trying to draw or if this is your only option, it might not be even worth it. Um, so then the question becomes like, if you don't get this card early in the game, when do you get it, right? So in the cases where, um, like as the game progresses, like a two cost plus two cards is like, is gonna be, you know, generally not something you wanna spend like your only buy on, for example, you know, most of the time. So in a, in general, that's going to mean that um, if you're going to pick this up, like in the mid to late game, once somebody, your, your once your opponent is ready to start greening, uh, then you're probably only going to do that if you have like a gainer or extra buys or something like that, right? And this is like something that you can get for cheap along with it. And the issue that I see there is that that sort of scenario tends to correlate with better deck control. Um, and unlike Coven, which dumps a whole bunch of curses on you at once, this is only doing it one at a time. So, you know, giving somebody one curse, like in the mid to late game, when they've already probably got deck control, is a lot of the time going to not be very strong, I suspect. And you have to get the Black Cat first, and then you have to have it when they gain a victory card. So you know, it's not like you can play it and have that happen. You have to happen to have it already. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I think, I don't think it's, like, a bad card because, like, at worst, you know, you can use it as, like, a supplemental draw or something like that. Um, and if the reaction does happen, even if your opponent can deal with it, I mean, it's still going to be nice to give them a curse. That's usually a good effect. Um, but, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's going to be, like, I, 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 I think it's very very rarely going to be like you know game defining or, or like be very impactful 
Um, and it's also going to be worse, like, if there is a cursor on the board to begin with and people are giving out curses right off the start, then, like, well, okay, it doesn't really do anything if the curse pile is out, right? So, yeah, I don't really see this card doing a whole lot. Um, but we'll we'll have to see whether, um, whether that proves to be the case. So the next card and final card for today is Wayfarer. It is a six-cost action. Uh, plus three cards, you may gain a silver. And this has the same cost as the last other card gained this turn, if any. All right, so let's start with plus three cards, you may gain a silver. Um, so it's a smithy variant. Um, it's a pretty different smithy variant than what we've seen before. Um, most of the most of the smithy variants do, like the, the variant they have from smithy has something to do with how they draw cards or what cards they draw um and this isn't that at all it's just you you just draw the three cards then you may gain a silver that seems like a really good card for a money deck um it also seems like a card that's like a you know just like a nice easy way to add payload but only as much payload as you want and not like too much right because you may gain a silver so you can you know, you can get these as just like your your regular draw card and then like opportunistically gain the silver when you're like, you know, I think I underinvested in my economy or whatever. I need, you know, I need just a little bit of a boost there. So I, I definitely like the flexibility on this. Um, that seems pretty nice. Now, obviously, if you're buying it for six, that's really expensive for a smithy, even if it can come with silvers. And I don't I don't think you're generally going to want to do that. Um, and here's where it's maybe not such a good card for a money deck because it says this has the same cost as the last other card gained this turn, if any. Well, in general, money decks aren't gaining multiple cards for per turn. Um, and if they are, like, they're not tending to try to want to gain, like, a lot of cheap cards. Um, but gaining cheap cards is exactly what you want to be doing to gain your Wayfarers. Um, so, I mean, I could certainly see this being good on a board with like pouch say and you know you have if you have like a, a four three you know the pouches in your four hand you can get like you know a good two cost and then wayfarer and then that's also a two cost at that point um you can even do stuff like buy a copper and then buy this for free although i wouldn't necessarily recommend that um but maybe it's worth it sometimes um I I'm trying to think if there's any other like like in, interesting like synergistic things you can do. Um hey, here's a here's an interesting question. What happens if you stonemason overpay for this? <laughs> like cuz you won't have gained the stonemason yet when you oh do the overpay. So do you probably the wayfarer still costs whatever the card you like the last card you gained before that one was if you have gained one and i guess if it i mean hopefully this is obvious i haven't even checked on this to verify but i think it's safe to assume that the card just costs six until you gain a card on your turn at which point it gain, it transforms to having that cost and then it you know does that until your turn is over and then when your opponent's turn starts it's it costs six again um that does also present some interesting options with uh trash for benefit because you know let's say that you um i don't know you uh i'm trying to think of why you would be gaining well okay how about this you gain or you play like a hero or, or like a mint or something and gain like a platinum right and now wayfarer costs nine um, which number one, watch out for that if you want to gain wayfarers. But number two, now you can salvage your wayfarer and you know get nine coins or you know something along those lines. Like that could be exciting. Um, but I think the I think certainly I think the the more common uh, interaction you're going to be looking at is how how do I um, get like a cheap card so that I can get wayfarer for cheap. And so if nothing else, that means that. You know cheap cards are going to be better and they're going to be um like th this card is going to encourage you to find synergies with cheap cards so like hamlet would be fantastic with this card i imagine because 
Um, not only is it cheap, but it also gives you the plus buy that makes it easier to like get like another Hamlet and a Wayfarer, like that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so so how strong is this going to be relative to other Smithy variants? I don't know. I think this is going to have more variance um, in terms of power level than a lot of the other Smithy variants, just because of like the the way the cost interaction works. Like, if you're having to buy this for six, it's definitely it's got to be the worst Smithy variant. Like, you may gain a silver, whatever. Like, that's that's still got to be worse than than you know any of the other Smithy variants, just by virtue of having to cost six. Um, that's that's just a lot to pay. Um, and so I don't think. I don't think that's something you're very often going to want to do unless you just like happen to have like more money than you really need to spend, you know, or something along those lines. Um, but like you, you know, you hit six and for whatever reason you don't want, you don't want gold. You don't want some other more expensive thing. You really just want more draw and that Wayfair is the draw. I'm like, okay, go ahead and buy it for six. But but like you're not going to be looking to do that in general. I I really don't think. I think it's going to be like so in in that respect because it's already um because it's already like contingent on there being something on the board that that lets it be discounted. Um I think that is going to make it probably weaker than most smithy variants just by virtue of the fact that sometimes that that synergy won't be there. That being said, for what it's worth, Wayfarer has self synergy with the you may gain a silver. Like if once you have one Wayfarer, you can gain a silver and then the next Wayfarer costs three. Three is a great price for a Smithy. Smithy costs four and Smithy's really good. Um, being able to buy a Smithy for three coins rather than four coins is fantastic. So maybe maybe i should reconsider the position of you know you don't want to be buying wayfarer for six because potentially you only have to buy one for six and then after that you can buy them for three if if nothing else so yeah i'm not i'm not sure how i feel about that um like whether that you know i mean hitting that hitting that six the first time is going to be the hardest time to do it um so that still might be it it might still be worse to be able to buy one wayfarer for six and then subsequent ones for three than to be able to buy like you know smithies for four or catacombs for five or what have you um but you know that i mean obviously again this is going to depend on the board um so i guess i guess my initial thought is i i do think uh i do think this is going to be below average within the smithy variants that's my initial guess but i'm very prepared to be wrong about that um just depending again on like how how worthwhile it turns out to be to get the first wayfarer and then to be a, and and how worthwhile it turns out to be to gain silvers in order to gain cheaper wayfarers that's an, that's also relevant because like sometimes you don't want silver um so that that's going to be important and then just like how many boards give you another convenient way to get cheap wayfarers um again that's that's going to be um relevant but there's going to be some boards where it's crazy because you're gonna you know you're gonna like have you know a bunch of plus buy from like workers village or something and then you've got like a watchtower and so you buy a copper and you watchtower the copper and then you buy like seven wayfarers or something <laughs> i don't know um anyway that 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 could that has the potential to be to be crazy all right, so that'll do it for today's cards. As I said, I will be continuing this series uh, with the, the one per day previews. Um, so look forward to that. Uh, thanks for watching and until then.